Hello there. So uh, for our 11th video in our series here, I thought it would be interesting if we took just a little bit more time and we actually reviewed uh, a couple of opportunities right out of the MLS. Uh, so we're going to start with this particular house I found and, and go through it in details and and really sort of break this down on what um, on what's possible. And then ultimately we're going to decide if it's a good deal or not and try to figure out if there's anything we could do to perhaps make it a better deal. So uh, I expect this to take 15 to 20 minutes and let's see how we do. All right, so uh, first and foremost, let's go through the details, right? So this is obviously a very clean house. Uh, it's listed for right around $287,000. It's just over 1,800 square feet, uh, four bedrooms, two baths, and has three car garage. Also, it was built um, in 2002. Uh, by all stretch, a uh, very clean house, not a lot of make ready costs. And again, something that's pretty common to find in the MLS uh, in today's market where there's uh, lots of first time buyers, uh, lots of properties that are very clean uh, because they're going after the FHA buyers and, and things of that nature. So what else do we need to know? Well, obviously, if we're going to hold this as a buy and hold rental, we need to know the estimated rental amount. I'm going to use 1400 here. It's possible it's 1450 or 1395 or you know maybe even it's 1500. But again, to, to break this down, we're going to have to use something. So we're going to use 1400. So what do we know? Uh, if you're going to, you know, we watch several of my videos and we talk about, I think it's number four, where there's no alligators. We, we need to figure out what is all of our out-of-pocket cash. And there's only one metric that matters to me, and that's yield on my cash. So if we're going to do a 20% down, that's, that's roughly $58,000. Uh, we're going to estimate for this transaction $3,000 in closing cost. And because it is so clean, um, you know, frankly, this could have been zero, but let's use $2,000. Maybe you want to do a thorough cleaning or a <clears throat> power wash the outside or, or whatever. We're just, we're just going to assume these numbers. So, you know, quick math says that six, this is going to take $63,000 to get into. All right. Well, what else do we know? Well, we got $1,400 in rent, which we got from the other slide. Um, quick mortgage calculations say payments right around $1,200. Uh, let's assume taxes and insurance are three fifty. Uh, let's assume we're going to be putting together or putting away three hundred dollars a month. Uh, something about repairs in this this number is you know that many months, especially in a new house like this, you're not going to have any repairs. But perhaps when you have one, it'll be more than three hundred. So um, you know, don't believe anybody that says, "Hey, you're not going to have any repairs. Put zero or or whatever." Again. Uh, when you take that kind of advice, you're only welcoming creating an alligator. Uh, and if we do anything together, um, don't ever buy an alligator. And again, an alligator is something that consumes cash every month. Um, just not not the way to go um, when you do this uh, the way that I recommend. So again, by this numbers, again, just simple math says this is $1,850 a month. So you can already see we're in trouble. Uh, in this case, you have $450 a month. Um, alligator, right? It's going to consume four hundred and fifty dollars of your income every month. Couple of things. First and foremost, I can already hear some of my past investors go, "But I love that house. It's great. Um, I can afford negative four fifty. Well, yeah, maybe you can, but you're never going to build the kind of portfolio that you need to accomplish your goals by buying alligators. How many could you really afford? You know. You know, even if you could afford 10, why would you? That's negative $4,500 a month for the sheer joy of owning 10 rentals. That is nuts. Don't ever do that. Um, that's just not how we're going to do this together, okay? So again, as I said, that's negative 450. And just to put it in real context, that's negative five, over $5,000 a year. So not a good deal. Again, I'm always talking about yield. So in this case... By buying that property with the details that we've given you, you have produced a negative 8.5% yield. So you've spent, I forget what it was, I think it was $63,000, and you're getting a negative return. That's not good. That's not what we want to do. Again, uh, never buy an alligator. And I use that imagery because I want you to really understand that they're hungry. They, they eat all the time and and. Every month, you're going to have to write a check. I don't want you to buy one. And it's not because you can't afford it. I know many of you can. It's because I believe each of you have goals that are bigger than one, two, or three. My hope is you're going after 10 or 20 over time. 
And if you're going to buy alligators or things that consume money, you're not going to get to the goals I want you to get to. Okay? So let's put in more work and make sure we pick the right kind of deals. And again, I don't care how pretty it is. If it's the cleanest thing on the block and it has gold, you know, doorknobs or whatever, it just doesn't matter, right? It's all about the yield. So again, the imagery, don't ever buy one. You can't do it. Um, if we're going to do this together, please, this is, this is something I need you to take home. We're not going to do this. So there are some things you could do, right? For whatever reason, let's say you fell in love with it or it's a, you know, it's one of those houses you just got to have or whatever, but you're also following the advice of, um, you know, never producing uh, a negative yield. So uh, you want to turn this house into a positive yield. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, you know, you got to remember first that there's the, the hardest part of all of this is finding the deal. In a market that's appreciating with low inventory, lots of uh, first time buyers going after clean homes with FHA financing, which means you should translate that to low down payment. You're going to have competition. First time buyers are your competition for clean houses. Why is that? Well, mostly because they're going to come in with small down payments. Whereas an investor, you're going to need, I would recommend 20%. Or the first time buyer could come in for three or five or 10%. So that's why they're going to be able to compete for these very clean houses. And, and again, I would say live where you want. So if that clean house is where you want to live, go for it. It's none, none of my conversations deal with owner occupants. I'm only talking to investors. If you, if you want that house to live in because it's where you want to raise your kids, it's where you want to go, have your kids go to school, go for it. That's not where I play. That's not what I do. Um, so really got to appreciate the chase or work with a team uh, that does the chasing for you, right? That they go out and scour the internet or scour the MLS listings or send out uh, flyers or, or whatever, um, trying to drum up business. Um, you know, get a part of one of those, such as uh, the one that I'm building. Um, what, so what can you do to produce a positive yield? Well, a couple of things. Um, you could pay cash for the building. I don't know if you know this, but if you bought that house for – $289,000, which if memory serves is the full down payment plus closing cost. Uh, actually, it would be full debt, full cash down or um, purchase price plus uh, repairs, excuse me. You would actually produce with the same numbers roughly uh, $9,000 a year or about a 3% return. Just stroke a check, pay it off, no loan, no mortgage interest. That produces uh, a positive return of, of 3%, over 3%. Um, you could offer a lot less. Um, I would tell you um, to produce this. I haven't run the numbers, but you know it's probably 210, 215 uh, to turn this into a positive cash flow. Uh, I, you know anything is possible, sure. Uh, but I got to tell you, in a market that has low inventory, you know three, four months of supply, the house is beautiful, it's clean. Uh, there is no reason for that seller to take your low ball offer, right? In a buyer's market totally different story but that's not where we are today so um, we just need to appreciate that there are some houses and I would tell you a lot of the MLS today guys is not for us right they're for the first-time buyers uh, and that's why it's uh, you have to appreciate and be excited about the chase about finding or creating a deal that's where we are today um, it's not a uh, not a market where half the MLS is uh, producing cash flow properties. So just know where we are and, and be willing to do the work or work with someone that is. So is this a good deal or not? I would say it's not a good deal. It's probably a great house. There's no, no question it's a great house, um, but it's not a good deal. Here's another one. All right, this is the second and last one we'll look at. So obviously it's a little bit older house. Uh, I think I have the details here. This one is listed for 125. Uh, it's just over a thousand square feet. It's listed as a two bedroom, one bath, which in my experience is it's an awful big two bedroom at, at over a thousand square feet. Looks like street parking to me. I don't see a carport back there. It's possible there's a carport in the back, but didn't look like it. Uh, and obviously much older. It was built in 1953. Obviously it's going to rent for less since it's only a two bedroom where I think the last one was a four, uh, a four two. Uh, we're going to say this one rents for just under 900 uh, as a two one. I will tell you a lot of the deals that I have done are houses like this. And I have not been in this one. That's why I didn't change the numbers. But let me ask you this. If you could turn, somehow turn this 2-1 into a 3-1, you're going to have the ability to raise rents $100. 
I have personally taken at least 10 two-bedroom, one-bath houses and created a 3-1. How does that happen? Well, in many of them, they had a family room and a living room, or maybe it was a dining room and a living room. And many times what I've done is I've added a wall and a door, and then I've added a closet. And I've taken that extra living space and turned it into what is now the master bedroom. So they have a big master bedroom compared to the other two bedrooms, which are typically small or near the same size. And now there's a three bedroom. And they've lost their living or family room, but again, it's a three bedroom. And three bedrooms rent for more than two bedrooms. In this case, I'm using $100 difference. It doesn't work all the time. You don't want to do that and create functional obsolescence where you walk through a bedroom to get somewhere else or something silly like that. But there are many houses that, uh, you know, especially when they get to be over a thousand square foot, there's an easy third bedroom to be created. Again, it doesn't happen all the time. It may not happen in this case, um, but it's something you need to think about and something where having a local team help you out is uh, pretty exciting because when you can find one of those, it, it you know, you buy it as a two, but rent it as a three, it, life gets better. So let's see about this one. Same deal, right? 20% down, so that's 25 grand. Let's say closing cost is $2,000 because a lower purchase price, lower closing cost. However, let's say make ready was more, right? Let's say it was $5,000. So in this case, total out of pocket was $32,000. Again, rent was $895, which we learned from earlier. Uh, we're going to estimate the payment at just, uh, just about $500, uh, given, um, again, a quick estimate uh, online with the mortgage calculator. Uh, we're going to say insurance and taxes are $200, and we're going to say uh, repairs, vacancies, and the like are $200. So in this case, we have total monthly expenses at $900, uh, where rent was $895. So that's negative $5 a month. Again, not something I recommend. Um, that negative $5 turns into negative $60 a year. And um, again, negative's negative, guys. It's just, if, if, if it produces negative cash flow, it's not something of interest to me. However, there's um, things that you could do differently with this one. So just to... Just to keep it on track. This one produces a negative 0.1% return. So $60, negative $32,000 down. It's negative 0.1%. Again, never buy an alligator. But let's think about what we could do to make this a better deal. Well, first off, if you put 30% down instead of 20%, your mortgage payment's going to go down and you're going to go, you're going to flip this to a positive cash flow property. Um, you can have a partner review it and go through it and say, hey, you know what? We can turn this two bedroom into a three bedroom. So don't estimate $895, estimate $995. And in this case, that would turn this into a $95 a month positive versus a $5 negative, that $100 increase in rent. Um, so that's cool. Or you can offer slightly less than the asking price. Maybe you offer $115, right? It's not like the other one where you had to offer nearly $90,000 less. You can offer $10,000 less. And in these markets with older homes, it's far more likely, even in a buyer's market, um, sorry, in, even in a seller's market, to get uh, a small discount on asking price. You may not get 10000 but I think this one's close enough. If you, if you got $5,000, uh, you'd be able to produce this into a positive cash flow property. Again, always remember, uh, this is something I'm going to be harping on as long as we do this together, is no alligators. So you need to find a way to make sure that this is not an alligator. Again, the easiest way is just to put more down. And that's okay. Just because a bank is willing to loan you 80% of the money doesn't mean it's a good deal. The bank doesn't care if you're negative. The bank knows you can afford a negative $5 a month, but that's not what I want you to do. Put the extra 10% down if you have to pay asking because you don't want to think about it. You want it to just you know produce money every month, even if it's $100, because you have bigger goals. You want to go after the next one and the next one. You can't do that. Um, ever buying alligators. So never fall in love with a, a property. It's, uh, it's simply an investment. It's simply a way to produce a positive yield. Uh, in a seller's market, most properties out of the MLS that you look in, in, in Realtor.com or Redfin or whatever, um, they're going to be aimed at first-time buyers with FHA financing, uh, especially if they're super clean. Um, they're always fun to look at, uh, but they're likely not going to be producing a positive yield for you, and that's what we're going for. Um, having a full-time job, which is hopefully the folks I'm talking to, um, it's you know it's it's hard to filter out quickly the unprofitable deals. I mean, and, and sometimes in the MLS, probably 90% today are not going to be feasible for positive yield 
but there is 10% or maybe there's 5%. Uh, they're in there, uh, but it takes some time and it takes uh, either lots of work on your end or working with a team to, to find these opportunities. Um, again, know that you always have the choice of putting more down. Uh, I can't stress enough that just because a bank will loan you 80% of the money, that, that doesn't make it a good deal. You have to produce a positive yield. That's your job. Never buy a property that produces a negative yield. That's not okay if you follow the model that I put out there. Something I will ask is that you uh, subscribe to the YouTube to this YouTube channel. It's called One Rental at a Time. Uh, I'm doing my best to provide content that is meaningful, that is free, and um, something I'm trying to do is is help a thousand people. I think as of this morning, we're up to 19 subscribers, uh, and I'm using that simple metric to find out how many people I'm helping. So if I'm helping you, please subscribe to the channel. It'll just uh, let me know that I'm doing good work, uh, and uh, we'll keep going forward. Uh, as I said, I'm tracking subscribers. Uh, I'm going after 1,000 folks in the year of 2018, and we're at 19, so we have 981 to go. So thinking about a couple of things. As I've shared uh, in past videos, I am getting my real estate salesperson license. I you know, obviously don't work anymore. Um, enjoying life, but uh, I think ultimately I want to be a, a broker and a broker that's focused on investors and, and folks that have full-time jobs. It's something I spent 15 years doing and I, I feel there's a unique niche there that I'd love to help those folks out. Uh, in order to get a broker's license in California, you need your salesperson license first, so that's what I'm doing. Something else I think that's important uh, is creating a questionnaire for potential investors because as I look at the market, there's lots of ways you could go. Right. You could decide that, you know what, I'm going to go after, you know, the bread and butter, you know, three, two, four twos built in the last 20 years. And I'm just going to put 50 percent down because I don't want to think about it. That's great. That's that's certainly a model to go after. Uh, maybe you were like me and, 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 you know, you wanted to go after the cheapest stuff that, that um, you know, you could put some elbow grease in and, and, and do something with. Um, and then maybe 1031 those when the market takes off. Great. Maybe you, maybe you just don't want to do houses. Maybe you want to do multifamily. Maybe you want to buy a bunch of fourplexes and you're okay with the increased expenses. Or maybe you, you have uh, some, some RSU dollars. Maybe your company went public. You know, maybe your company got bought and you had a liquidity event. And you got a bunch of cash and you want to go straight to apartments. Whatever you'd like to do, that's, that's, you know, we can talk about that. And I, I think there's a questionnaire that we need to go through to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, I'm doing Facebook Lives. I actually did one uh, earlier in the week. Um, it recorded the audio great, but it did not uh, slide. Uh, the, the presentation didn't change slides, so I'm going to work on doing that better and, uh, again, putting uh, out longer content that way. Uh, this is one that I need to hear from you, uh, especially if you live in the Silicon Valley. I'm thinking about taking a trip to Fresno. I'm actually thinking about renting a van or a bus that will hold 20 people because I, I get asked all the time, take me to Fresno. Let's go. Show me what you got. And it's tough doing that with you know one or two people in a car, right? My, myself, Olivia, and, and two folks. So I might just pony up and rent a van. And we'll spend two and a half, three hours getting down there. We'll probably go through some Fresno details so we can make the time go fast. We'll go look at five to eight properties at different levels. Um, and then we'll come back. And I think, I think that's going to be interesting. If you live in the Silicon Valley and you're interested in that, please send me an email at mzuber at one rental at a time. Dot com. Uh, I am going to be thinking about doing this in May. Um, let the rain go through and, and get out because I don't, you know, I'm I don't want any increased risk, so I don't want to be raining outside or wet uh, when we do this. Um, driving all that way, but um, I want to hear from you. If you're interested in doing that, just let me know. No, no commitment, obviously, but if you're interested, let me know because uh, I want to start tracking folks and, and see who may want to go.